In this video, we're gonna look at this Stripe website, how to set up an account, how to get things going over in Bubble with your account so that the two are connected, so that Bubble can process payments using Stripe connected to your bank account. Let's get started. First, navigate to stripe.com and then click sign in. You'll wanna sign up for an account and after you do that, basically, you know, email, password, all pretty standard stuff. Once you do that, you will be directed into an account that looks like this. You have an option to activate it. We're not gonna do that this just yet. I'll walk you through that in this course of what you need for that. But for the purposes of right this moment, what we wanna do is actually navigate over here to developers and API keys here on the left. So uh, notice this toggle here, it's an important point. We have to activate it to get live data. Bubble, um, we'll see in a moment, has two areas Let's go ahead and navigate to the bubble plugin area and I will show off what I mean by these two areas in bubble. So we're going to grab this stripe.js2 and you can see 13,000 apps, Copilot, fantastic uh, development group out here in the bubble e ecosystem. Uh, go ahead and install that and let's take a look at what we have here. So they have a couple of options here a Stripe publishable key, a Stripe secret key, dev dev. That is actually what we're looking at when we're looking at these keys. So I'm gonna go ahead and click copy here for this publishable key, paste that in, and then I am going to grab this test key, copy that, paste that in here, and we'll be doing the same things once we verify the account. Again, like I said, notice this toggle switch. We have to go and activate our account before we can put these values into um, this live area. But notice that we've been working in this uh, development version all this whole course. We actually have never even pushed our app live. So Bubble is smart and knows that when we're in development, it uses these keys to process test payments and it will use the live ones once we've activated our account and pushed our bubble app live. So we are all set up then with our keys to begin work on our page. Let's navigate to this mobile payments page. And we'll go ahead and like we normally do, we'll bring it down to 320. We will not make it fixed width. And the minimum width, we're just gonna say at least 99 and we'll just allow it to expand out as needed. That's fine. Uh, one, two, one, two, one, two. It has been the background color that we're, we've been working with. And yeah, with that all set up, then next, let's go ahead and grab a group, drop that onto the page and zero that one out. And then, I don't know, make it yay big. Looks good and then apply max width on this one. This is gonna control, and then put 200 for the maximum width. This is gonna control all of the uh, responsiveness for the purposes of what we're gonna do here. So let's call this the payments page, and then let's go ahead and make life easy on ourselves a little bit by doing some copy and paste work. So over here in, let's see, how about this favorites one? Yep. So let's just grab these two, paste those in, and nudge those into place. And then let's grab a group here, and we'll remove the style. Background, we'll give it a flat color of white. And then let's go with 280. Go ahead and center that horizontally. Give it a roundness of 10. And okay, we're looking like we've got a bit of a form up here. Actually, so what we want this one to say is um, credit card. And this is really, really strong. I want to go with, uh, how about Leto 700 here? Like it, okay. Um, so 
when, when we installed that um, plugin, it gives us access to some of these Stripe things here. Grab the Stripe element, drag that onto the page, and let's go with, we need it to be, we need it to be at least 261 wide to get some uh, special features. This is an automatically generated Stripe element, but uh, with that width, we get some nice icons that show card things. So let's go ahead and just update this. Let's see how we're looking. Yeah, so check that out. So we've got a card number thing here, and let's go ahead and make this a height of 40. And I've got this one at a ask postal code. We're gonna say no. Disabled no. And we've got to add a y value of 14, just because of how some of the spacing goes. But let's see how this is looking. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's 23. I think I'm gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, with a 10 distance. I'm just gonna say card information because it might be a debit card all right so let's grab that card information and then let's plop that down here and we're going to say card card holder name and we are going to insert two fields so grab on the input forms just an input line and let's remove the styling here but we'll start with 130 We'll do it by 40. And what have we got here for a, uh, yeah, we're gonna just take that same color, uh, no borders, horizontal padding of 10, that looks fine. We're gonna have this be Lato, uh, let's say 14. And that 2525, go up to this stripe element and go ahead, yeah, that's Lato 14 as well. Okay, cool. So we're looking good here. Um, the placeholder, we're gonna say first name. And elements visible upon page load does not need to be fixed with, we'll say 200 here. And then I think that's looking pretty good. Placeholder color, let's go black. And then now with that styled, let's go ahead and paste it over here. So this will be first name, last name. So this allows us you know, to have the, the card holder's name to process the card, but it's also great because we can intake this information, use it in emails like, hey, John, or hey, Susan, um, things like that. So that's 18. Let's go ahead and move this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up. So we've got a 10 pixel thing there. And then let's see how we're looking here. All right, looks like this can come up. And yeah, so we've got the start of what we're going after here. And then let's let's see, the distance between these ones is 30. So here we're looking at 30 as well. All right, so let's say subscription details. And then whoop, grab this. And what we'll do here, actually I think we want it just a 10 difference there. We'll grab the style here, we'll just say body. Then we'll remove that style immediately and we'll get it to Lato. And I think we'll want something like 12 perhaps. And a much lighter, lighter color here. Uh, let's say 13. Okay, so subscription details, what we want to say is yoga class subscription. Uh, or call it whatever you would, you would want. Uh, and then we'll grab the same exact thing, put that on top of there, make sure it's centered. And then we will align the text on this one to the right. And then we'll just drop in a price for this one, say $19.99 per month. And then we'll say, we'll 
center this one horizontally. Let's see, I want this to be at 20. And I want this one, yep, that looks right. Let's see how we're looking here. So subscription details, probably want this one to say something like uh, receipt email. And this is uh, what we'll do. We don't actually know the current user's um, email address. We have to go and grab it from this user ID. We just know we're dealing with this user. So what we want to do, I think we're gonna make this text C2 a little bit darker, B. Then I'll click send that to back so we can update the other ones since we have two here. And then update this one as well. All right, so what I wanna say here, I want to say, um, Actually, I want to say this. When the page loads, so general, when the page is loaded, here's an action to do. We're going to do element action, set a state, and we'll just set it on the um, group payments page. Is that our main group? Yes, it is. Okay, so with that set up, we'll create a custom state and we will call it the uh, user email. We'll just set it as a text and we'll look for, we'll do a search for a user where the unique ID, and this is where we'll use that value. We'll get data from the page URL. And this is a fancy thing that if you ever see things happening in URLs, it's things like this on the back end. We're grabbing that UID and then we're saying when it's equal to that, that's our user. That's how we found our user. Okay, and this returns a list of users, so just then it's a list of one. So we just grab the first item. And then we want to grab this person's email address. So now we've stored that value into here. So this group payments page user email is actually usable on the page. So we can clear that expression and then we can go and get uh, it's under this group payments page. It's got this state in it. So let's take a look at that and then we'll call it good for this video. Yeah, so we have a card number here that we can just start entering in, to, in stuff. And we can enter in a first name and a last name. Yoga class subscription. The receipt email is gonna be sent to this email, which we know their email because they signed up to our application. And then we'll have a button where people can start that subscription